What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl Keisha and I'm here with tonight's All Tea, All Shade, Real Housewives of Potomac Season 3, Episode 9 Review. So, we start off tonight's episode with Monique crying to Sharice about being stupid for thinking that she made new friends with the girls. Sharice comforts her and tells her that she doesn't, you know, that the other girls don't know her, that she knows her, that they don't get her, and that everything will pretty much be okay. They get in their car and they leave. Candace and Chris are spending time together. They talk about his kids being in the wedding and her mom knowing about his two youngest kids, but not his 15-year-old son, honey. They see the little kids once a month, but him and the older son don't uh, get a chance to see each other because him and his baby mama don't get along. She hasn't told her mom because she don't want her mom to judge him. And I'm like, girl, you need to step your pussy up and stop acting like a little punk ass bitch. And stop acting like you fucking your mama and not your man. Your mama don't run your life, sis. Well, technically she run your life, but you need to really step your pussy up and stop acting like a little punk. Um, She plans on telling her mother the truth before she walks down the aisle. I'm like, uh, you think? So Robin and her little bad and bougie ass kids are waiting on Juan to come home. He come home with some vegan food. Um, they talk about their son's youngest birthday party. They're going to invite his dad. Now, the T is that Juan grew up thinking that a man named Phil was his father, but recently found out that his dad is a name, man named Bruce. His mom died and kept her fling with Bruce a secret. So, the Phil guy was high yellow light skin or whatever, don't look shit like Juan. His real father, him and Juan, look exactly like, had the same dimples and everything. Shit was crazy. So, now, Robin wants to talk to a medium to get some, you know answers to the questions that they have she tells Juan that her and Monique are into it and that she keeps on making digs of her money issues and I'm like no that girl haven't anytime she has said anything derogatory to you it's because you started some shit with her so stop it with the fu fucking hysterics and the goddamn pity victim party that you like to throw yourself constantly Robin you start shit and then get mad when other motherfuckers finish it Monique and her daughter, who is beautiful, by the way, that little girl is so damn pretty, go to see Karen at her home. She wants to apologize to Karen for ruining her party. Karen accepts her apology. Monique says that Robin was egging her on to hit her when they got into it. And Robin was like, you know, I won't go hit her first. Her and Wild ain't gonna be living up in my house. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. That's exactly what Robin asked wanted her to do. Karen sympathizes with Monique because she knows that Giselle and Robin always like to gang up on people, you know, like they tea and Samaria or some shit. So, Monique and Sharice are helping with flood relief in Houston, and she wants the girls to help, but she don't want it to be no bullshit. You know, this is for charity. Karen agrees to give her support. Candace and her bogus ass mama head to lunch at Chris's restaurant. Chris will be arriving later on in the scene. Her wig looks so much better. Somebody must have told her, bitch, you can't be nasty and negative with a fucked up ass wig on, bitch. <laughs> so Candace brings up Chris kids and is scared shitless to tell her mama about his 15 year old son. She started crying before she can get the story out. Her mother actually took the news quite well and was very supportive. I was shocked. Somebody must have told her, bitch, you looking real crazy in that last scene. You better pull it together. America gonna hate your ass. So Chris then shows up and explains his side of the story. He says he hasn't seen his son in nine years. He starts to get emotional. And he says that, you know, he thinks about going over to see the little boy because he knows exactly where he stays. The little boy lives in Atlanta, close by them. But his mother always threatens him, you know, that if he comes by, I guess she's going to do something. My thing is, why can't you see your son? Why don't you go to court and file for visitation? It's not fair or right or legal for her to just say you can't see him if you really wanted to have a relationship with your child you would have took taken her to court to get some type of visitation my thing is did you physically harm them in some type of way threaten them what the what is going on i need answers chris because what your story ain't adding up and candace you need to be asking more goddamn questions too so giselle gonna get her hair done by that nigga that don't know how to do her they always fucking her shit up she still don't know what the fuck is going on with her and sherman she starts to cry because she says she feels under pressure and walks off while getting her hair color. You know, her stylist gives her advice and she starts to tear up again. She, you know, she say that she got this, this, and that going on with the kids and her makeup line and this book and her mother who lives in Houston. And I'm like, bullshit, you mad because that nigga didn't chuck your ass up the deuce. Your beautiful ass is shocked that somebody said, fuck you and beast out on your ass. That nigga has ghosted you, ma'am. You know what a nigga ain't feeling you. Well, maybe you don't. Maybe this is why it's hitting you so hard. But that nigga has ghosted your ass. He got the fuck out before shit got too motherfucking heavy. Evidently, with something about your ass, he ain't like or he found somebody else that was better. Move the fuck on, light skin. 
So it's Monique's hurricane relief event. Sharice contacted all her friends to come and help, and they did. Candace and Chris come, as well as Giselle, but leaves, she leaves quickly, bitch, because she and Monique don't get along. I'm like, well, at least the bitch helped. Ashley helps, and so does Karen. Sharice and Monique didn't even know that Sh Giselle showed up because she didn't even speak to nobody. Robin ugly ass didn't even attempt to help, and I'm like, your broke ass needs to be the main one trying to help other people out, bitch. But her nasty ass, her nasty ass attitude decided to throw some type of meeting to create her own women's empowerment event. I'm like, how you empowering anybody with your negative ass? You always talking shit about every other motherfucking body, but you trying to act like you so motherfucking empowering and fucking supportive? Yeah, right, Robin. So... Monique was able to fill up two U-Haul trucks. She thanks Ashley for coming despite their recent blow up. They meet soon after to talk about everything that happened between them two. It's awkward as hell as first. Monique feels like Ashley betrayed her and played her. Ashley notices that Monique ordered tea instead of alcohol. I'm like, yeah, because she's a smart girl. She's smarting the fuck up. She must have watched this review, even though this shit was filmed like six months ago. So she tells her that she has no issues with Monique. Monique tells her that, you know, her name is her business and that she could have ruined her reputation. Ashley apologizes and Monique accepts it, but will tread lightly when dealing with her in the future. I'm like, be smart. Smart decision, girly. Um, Ashley still says, though, in her confessional that she did nothing wrong and that Monique knows that she just got caught. And I was like, well, what the fuck is the point of your ass apologizing, bitch? You're going to continue to be shady in your goddamn confession. I see this is what I don't like about you, uh, Ashley. That was some fake-ass bullshit. Big bubble-eyed bitch. So, Robin has his medium come over to talk to her and Ron. The man channels his mother right off the bat and is spot on with his reading. Juan starts to cry. He says his mother was on drugs and has some sort of intravenous uh, disease. Juan confirms that his mother dies, died of AIDS and is shocked that she is there with them. He channels uh, his father, uh, Phil, Two, it says that, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but he was not your biological father, but you know, Juan already knew this. He brings up their friend who stole all their money and committed suicide by jumping off a bridge. Robin immediately breaks down and starts crying. Um, they ask, you know, why did he do it? The medium says that the man didn't know how to ask for help and kept everything bottled up. Juan is holding Robin, and this is the most affection I've ever seen this nigga show her. The medium says that the man is content with his death, but that he's not apologetic for what the fuck he did. And Juan is like, that selfish ass bastard, that motherfucker ain't changed a bit, not even in heaven. Or hell, where the hell yet? So, the medium says that his mom is thrilled that Juan has a relationship with his real father, but that she was not going to tell him while she was alive that Phil was not his real daddy. I'm like, people are selfish as fuck. His mother loves Robin, however, and wants him to work shit out. They laugh about the shit together, and the episode goes off. So, after that, they showed the mid-season trailer, and we see Giselle trying to turn Sharice against Monique. Juan and Robin getting closer. Sherman's ex-wife joins the group, which I cannot wait for that team. Karen possibly lying about still living in her new home that she just moved in. Monique and Chris have emergency problems, and Giselle saying that Ray don't want Karen but some little young chick. Girl, Potomac is bringing it. I'm loving this season thus far. Let me know what you thought about tonight's episode down below in the comment section. If there's any audio issues in this video, excuse it. I'm so sorry. Um, make sure to thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell button if you have not. My new book, First Wives Club, Melanin Magic, will be available very soon. I'm wrapping it up. But until then, check out the fifth book in my China Black series titled Such a Fucking Lady. The links are down below in the description box. Also, thank you to any of you who follow me on social media for your well wishes with my son's graduation Thursday. It was a wonderful, glorious day. I thought I was going to cry and be like a hysterical mess because I had been crying so much leading up to it. But I actually held the fuck together. I was very proud of myself. For those of you that didn't get to see it, go over to my Instagram page and hit, check, um, hit my um, Kyrie's graduation highlight reel on my profile. So thank you once again to all your well wishes. Um, also this week I will have a Zawful mini summer haul video. I partnered up with them. So be on the lookout for that. I got some cute fashions from Zolfo, So I'm excited about that. Love you guys very much. And I will see you all tomorrow for my Love and Hip Hop and Basketball Wives review. Love you. Bye.